Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic edition of the His and Her Money Show, where we make it our business to help you take dominion over your money and your life. Thank you for tuning in once again, because you don't have to be here rocking with the His and Her Money Show, but the fact that you are, we are grateful. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, make sure on the podcast and apps that you're leaving a honest review of the show, because our goal with the work that we do is to help as many people as we possibly can. And you can help us help them by letting everybody know that this is a show that they should be tuned into. Thank you in advance. We make it our business here to talk about money and life. And sometimes those things go hand in hand. And I think today's episode is one of those episodes. We're going to be talking with a good friend of ours, a friend of the show, a friend of ours in real life who's been helping people all around the world get their finances on track for a very long time. And she has a brand new book where she's continuing that effort. And I'm glad that we're going to be able to have this conversation because it's a, it's an, it's an important conversation to have. Our friend Bola Shokundi, who is the founder of Clever Girl Finance and the author of the brand new book, Choosing to Prosper, is here with us. And we're going to talk about this thing because prospering is a choice that we all should make and she's here to help us think differently and act differently in this way so let's get bola on so we can hear her fantastic wisdom on this matter hey bola welcome to the his and her money show hey thank you so much for having me we're glad to have you back man it's been it's been several years since you were here you came where you talked about way back in the day, and we'll link it in the show notes of this episode, but she came because she did an incredible thing several years ago where she just saved $100,000 and she just put it up. And it really uh, taught her a lot and, and positioned her to prosper, which we'll get into today. But Bola, man, some people, even though you've been doing this work for a while, may be getting introduced to you for the first time right here, right now, so can you say hello to everybody and then kind of let everyone know what you're all about? Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to say that interview I did with you guys several years ago, that was my first or second podcast episode ever, ever in my entire life. I was so nervous. You guys gave me a good talking to about calming down. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for that opportunity. It was it was big for me. But if you're not familiar with me, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of a media company called Clever Girl Finance. Our goal is to empower women and our allies to achieve financial wellness on their own terms. We also happen to we happen to be one of the largest personal finance platforms for women in the U.S. And it's just something that I am completely honored and humbled to be able to lead, followed by. Uh, and supported by the Clever Girl Finance team. So uh, our goal is just to empower people with knowledge and information so that you can get to the point where you have what it takes to live the life that you desire for yourself on your own terms. Awesome. Now, you've written several books um, over the years. Most of your books have been very tactical, where you were teaching us how to invest or how to get uh, extra money through side hustles. But this time around, this book, is personal and this book is inspirational it's called choosing to prosper what made you go this route and what do you mean by choosing to prosper yeah so this you're right Atta, this is a personal book um this is a, a book that highlights my story my journey to getting where i am today and the book title was an intentional choice um, I remember having a conversation with my publisher about how um, it should be choose to prosper or I've chosen to prosper. And I said to them, choosing is an active word and it's a decision that I make every single day. And people have to make every single day in their lives, especially as they navigate tough times to achieve their goals. And this book really highlights my background of where I'm coming from. So I consider myself first generation uh, Nigerian immigrant, moved here with my family. And my parents are first generation everything. They were the first to go to grade school, go to high school, go to college in their, in their families. And they come from backgrounds of, of high poverty where my dad did not start the first grade until he was 13 years old. Um, 
and his mother was one of, of five wives with multiple children and she had to figure out how to educate her children but also the very at the very basic how to feed her kids right so just thinking back to my background and what I've been fortunate to accomplish in my life today, I felt that sharing that story would be a way to empower other people who feel like they're going through a struggle, who feel like they have things stacked against them to make that intentional choice to prosper, to also achieve their own goals and visions that they have for their lives. Are you of the belief that anybody can make this choice, no matter what their background, no matter what obstacles they had to overcome, no matter where they were raised or who they were raised by, do you think everybody has a chance at prosperity? I believe so. And I believe the choice is something that everyone can make because when you wake up in the morning, you are not in control of the outside factors that may impact your life in that day, but you are in, in, in control of the decision of how you're going to deal with those factors and the choices you're going to make as those factors are placed in front of you. And just given my own background, right, um, of, of where my parents are coming from, where my grandparents uh, came from, um, I believe that everybody has it in them to achieve prosperity. Obviously, the road, the path is different. For some people, it might be easy. For some people, it might be incredibly difficult. But it starts with that intentional choice, with that active decision that it doesn't matter what's, what gets thrown at me today. I'm going to make that choice to do well in this day. Now, you talked about the fact that in your current season, you, you've achieved a great level of entrepreneurial success. Before that, you achieved a great level of uh, corporate America success. But all along the way, you've been consistently underestimated. If somebody feels like that describes them, how do they turn that into fuel instead of frustration? Mm -hmm. So I'm a black woman, young black woman living in America um, from Africa. And there are many factors working against me, right? Um, and you think back to us, so I'll just give you a, a quick brief story about what I mean by that, especially being female and being black. Um, in my in my father's generation, his parents, um, the value was placed on the male child, right? So my dad is a, is a twin. He, he has a twin sister. And my dad has two PhDs, highly educated, but my dad's twin sister um, does not read or write. She is not formally educated and she did not even go to primary school, which is grade school here, because the value of what she was as a woman was not placed upon her, right? So she didn't have the opportunities her twin brother, her best friend had, um, and she was underestimated because she just wasn't given the opportunity. But she did find a way to make herself successful in her own right by becoming a trader, by becoming a businesswoman and building a life for herself and for her children. And so that's one example of, you know, underestimation that I have experienced. And I kind of relate to that because I saw it going through college. Right, people would ask me where I came from, why was I here, how did I get on a plane, can I touch your hair, to corporate America where I would be presenting in meetings and executives would tell me, I've been working here before you were born, who do you think you are, sit down, you know, be quiet, uh, to even starting a business where in the initial um, beginnings of growing Clever World Finance, attempting to raise money and being told things that women of color, black women do not care about their personal finance, that anything that's technog technological for women of color is too much because they, they don't use computers like that. And so initially, um, one, of, one of the ways I, I managed that underestimation was with, with anger. I would be upset a lot. Um, but I, as I got older and I got more mature, I started to realize that I could channel that anger into action and into, into proving people wrong if I did not allow that emotion to consume me. Because what happens when you're angry about being underestimated is that you get so caught up in your feelings that you don't take action and instead you start to build this resentment. But you haven't made the progress that you truly want to make for yourself. And so for me, it was learning to grow thick skin. It was being okay with being angry, but then asking myself, okay, now I'm angry. What am I going to do to prove this wrong, to achieve this thing I want to achieve, whether it was in college, whether it was in my career, whether it was in the business, regardless of what people are going to say about me or say to me? Because at the end of the day, it's irrelevant what the people who are underestimating you think. 
what's most relevant is what you truly desire for yourself and what you truly want to accomplish for yourself and the actions that you go out and take so that you don't start to feel regret in the future because you didn't do these things because you were so caught up in being angry and res resentful um, to people who don't even matter. Man, good advice. Now, I'm curious, what, what did you do in those moments? Because you said initially, uh, just like anybody would, that we're told, um, um, why are you here? And can I touch your hair? And, you know, you're a woman and you can't do that. Go sit down. That's going to make anybody upset. But you said that at some point you figured out, like, this is a waste of my energy just being upset. I need to do something about it. So were there some, like, personal disciplines that you developed because, it's not like you escaped the world. You still have to operate in it. You have to learn how to thrive and you have to learn how to prosper in it despite external ignorance around you. So how did you prepare yourself in turn? What type of work did you do? Were, were you journaling, reading books? Were you praying? Like, How can we start to discipline ourselves that despite external things going on that are looking to derail us, take us off course, make us feel less than, I need to do the internal work to, to push past what everybody else is talking about. Yeah, so it, it was definitely a, a work in progress for me, right? So initially I would get angry and then I would react in a way of anger. Maybe I would insult you or I would yell at you, but whether that really, it just justifies that other person's beliefs about what they have had about me. Yes, I'm right, look at how she's acting. And then I would get upset, but I would not react, right? And again, that helped to justify that person's beliefs about me. So I learned how to lean on my support system, specifically my mom, in talking to her, because my mom, you know, navigated all kinds of adversity from her own background, getting married to my dad, difficulties in their own marriage, and being able to become this financially independent woman who eventually became the breadwinner of our family. And so she would tell me, um, Bola, listen, the people you're angry have nothing to do with the path that God has set for you. They have nothing to do with the, the intentions that God has for your life. So why are you so worried about people that don't matter, who need to face their own journey, who, who need to face their own path? And she also told me that's important that I use my voice to tell these people why I'm going to be successful. Sure, you believe that, you know, uh, women of color don't care about their finances, but guess what? I'm living proof that we do care about our, about our finances. This community that I've built is living proof that we do care about our finances. We do, we do care about our well-being. And so what I'm going to do is say to you, thank you for your feedback, but I disagree. And I'm going to continue to move forward and pursue my goals. And so I always made it apparent to the people that, yes, you may feel that way, but that your impression, the way you feel is not a reflection on me and it's not going to take me off of the path that I'm on, that I've set myself on to achieve this thing that you are telling me that I cannot do. And so I learned how to turn that anger into intention, into taking action and in, and in a, in, into being able to use my voice in a mature way to counter that negativity that was being thrown at me. Man, that's good. I, and that doesn't sound like it's an easy thing to do because when the emotions are hot, you know what I mean? You're, you 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 want to react in the moment and you want to react in the moment in a certain way because you want them to feel the pain that you just felt from their words. But there has to be a maturing because I think that what you're speaking to is longevity, right? You can get this maybe instant gratification of telling someone about themselves in the moment. But what does that do for you in the long run? How have you grown or how have you matured? You have it. You actually fed into or dropped down to the level of somebody else's ignorance along the way, which is the opposite of, of uh, choosing to prosper. You're, you're actually dumbing yourself down to a level that you weren't at previously, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that is that is very true. And like you said, it, it takes time, it takes maturity. Uh, you And it, it's really important that you, with every encounter you have, you take a step back to really reflect on what the impact of that encounter has had on you. So there's a story I talk about in the book, and this is this is a story that I, I, I think I've thought back on often. And it, it's, it, this is me fresh faced in college on Christmas day. I went to college in Europe in Vienna and that Christmas I couldn't go back home. And I got on the train with a friend to go to her house on Christmas day to spend Christmas with her family. And on the train in the back, it was three of us, my friend, myself, and a, a, a Austrian man. And as we're sitting talking about our day and how amazing this Christmas day is going to be, I hear from the back in German, this man says, what are you 
so happy about when you're both just a couple of the n-word yes i speak german <laughs> i was born in austria so I, and in that instance i was so overcome with anger and i remember i was holding on onto a magazine i rolled the magazine up and i jumped to the back of the train and i started to smack this guy with my magazine and i'm like how dare you talk to me who are you calling the n-word this that this that and the train screeches to the halt a halt because the train driver had seen on the camera what was going on in the train and as soon as that happens me and my friend are scared we start packing up our bags like okay this guy's going to call the police we're black this that and he comes and he says to us no sit down i'm sorry this has happened to you he takes the guy by the collar of his shirt and he throws him out or his jacket and he throws him out onto the street it's a street car but even though that situation went to on my side where he didn't call the police he didn't kick us off of the train i had to think about it i'm here as a foreigner in another country i'm here for a purpose which is to go to college um this purpose i'm here for has come at an incredible expense to my parents right because i couldn't qualify for student loans um you know my mom was working like a crazy person in order to help me pay for for college i had gotten a partial scholarship that i could get to help cover the cost all the sacrifices had been made for me to be here in this position with this opportunity to get a college degree to change my life and knowing that my parents are also the first generation and I'm here fighting on the train with a nobody. What if this guy had a knife? What, he, what if he had a gun? And even if he had none of those things, he could have very easily overpowered me and beat me to the ground. So I, I really had to reflect on that and ask myself, was that worth it? No, it was not. So how instead do I, do I manage that anger so that the next time that happens when I'm faced by a situation like that, I don't put myself in a place where I can jeopardize my own opportunities and my own trajectory. Awesome. Now, how did all this, you went through a lot and you're, it's way more that you haven't articulated yet. How did this um, fortify you when it came to your personal financial journey? You know, what it, what all of the different experiences I faced, um, you know, my dad's twin sister being edu educated, my dad starting school at age 13, um, my mom being a stay at home mom. And um, at the time I was a little girl, one of her best friends committed suicide uh, because she was not in a good situation in her relationship. And then my mom working to go to college after she had me because my mom had four kids. She got married at 19. My dad was in his 30s. Um, she did not go to college until she was in her own 30s where she felt like she needed to figure out how to get her own financial situation together. And so all of those different experiences combined, um, they really highlighted to me the importance of money and leveraging it to create change and create options in someone's life in my life and in my family's life like having money gives you opportunities to work walk away from situations that don't serve you to pursue your path and your purpose on your own terms without regardless of anybody else's feedback it helps you impact change right so once you've figured it out you now have money to give back and help other people like you who are going through your experiences figure it out as well and so from a financial perspective it was really about how do i make money to give me options and we met a few years after that because that was when i graduated from college and i decided that i needed to figure out how to make as much money as possible to save as much money as possible so that i could give myself options uh, that my mom didn't have that my auntie did not have that other women in my family did not have and that was where that hundred thousand dollar saving story came from several years later i think what's huge is that you just said something that I hope didn't go over people's heads. Um, the goal wasn't just to make a lot of money because some people think that more money is the answer, but more money could bring more problems. And a shout out to uh, Christopher Wallace. But um, you said not only make money, but figure out how to save more money. So there, there is a two-pronged approach, figure out how to get money and figure out how to manage money well. Is that a part of this choosing to prosper journey that you want us to go on? Absolutely. Part of choosing to prosper is not just acquiring money because money goes as easily as it comes, right? Uh, there is no amount of money 
that you you cannot spend. People are always like, how do people spend a million dollars? How do people spend fifty million dollars? And I, I was I read something that was it was a conversation. Somebody had said to me, how does someone spend fifty million dollars? And I had read something about someone who had fifty million dollars and they bought a private jet for forty five million. You spent fifty million. You can spend it. <laughs> And if you can't spend it, there are people out there that will help you spend it. So the goal, like you said, is how do I save? How do I invest? How do I build wealth? And for me, it is, you know, so so my story in the book comes from highlighting my grandmother's, both of my grandmother's story, my paternal and maternal grandmothers, and the generational knowledge they transitioned to my dad and my mother, and then what they transitioned to me. And so for me, wealth now that I'm in this position where I have the opportunity that the people before me did not have. My question to myself is how do I create generational wealth while I teach my children the value of a dollar? While I teach my children about being responsible individuals, how do I now transition generational wealth? And so it's really important that as you are deciding what you want to accomplish for yourself, you decide how do I not only make this possible, but how do I make this permanent? And the way that you make it permanent is by having that fallback, by having those savings, by having those investments, by having that financial backup plan so that your money is not just coming in and immediately all going out because you don't have this plan. Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com. Now, you said earlier that the, the title, Choosing the Prosperous, because it's a decision that you have to make every day. It's not a one-time decision. There may be some people listening that are in a less than ideal financial situation, even if they got good jobs, maybe savings aren't where they needed to be, investing isn't where it needs to be, maybe they still got debt. And your daily decisions have to start with the first decision, the first choice to prosper. How does somebody who feels not great about their current financial situation make that first decision? that I am going to choose to prosper? You know, that's a good question because sometimes you are in a situation and I found myself there where it's just like, what is the point? Like this woman is here telling me to choose to prosper, but look at everything that is wrong in my life. Like, what is the point? But the truth is that when we wake up, we really have two choices. We make this a good day. We make this a bad day. We make a plan or we do nothing. We find someone to that we can talk to, that we can gain knowledge from, or we call our unsupportive family members, we call our pity party friends, and we have a woe is me conversation. So once you have that awareness that you have these two choices every single day, and those choices are in your control, right? You may get a bill just out of the blue that was out of your control, right? Flat tire, out of your control. Um, there are so many things that are out of your... Pandemic was out way way out of our control right but what is in your control is the choice that you make on that day in that moment as to how you approach it and how you approach it does not mean that you have the solution it doesn't mean that you have the answer it doesn't mean that you have a check in your back pocket to just pay down all of your debt it just means that you're going to approach this in a different way so that you can continue to move forward from here and it could be approaching it from an actionable point right? What can I do to move money from here to there? Or it could be approaching it from a mindset point, a mental adjustment. How can I think about this differently? Yes, I am in debt. I can think to myself, we're all meant to be in debt. I'm never going to pay this off. Or I can think to myself, yes, I'm in debt. What can I do right now to pay this off? Do I need to call my lender and say, I don't have a job right now. Can you give me a payment plan? Do I need to look through my closet and see what I can put on Facebook marketplace to get a few extra dollars to put food on the table and maybe put some money towards that debt? 
once you're able to get your head in the game, the decisions that you make will lead you closer to your progress, right? Um, when you have that woe is me mentality, you stay stuck where you are. Two months down the line, six months down the line, 12 months down the line, you look back and you're right where you've been. But when you adjust your mindset with that intentional choice that you're going to do something different, you're going to choose to prosper, you look back and you find that, wow, I actually was able to feed my kids this entire year without borrowing money. I was actually able to pay my bills on time this entire year. I was actually able to figure out how to hustle and get extra money by doing these side gigs, by doing all these things. I didn't just sit down on the couch with my woe is me best friend and complain all day long. Those are choices. So it might be difficult, it might be hard, but it's about choosing. Do I just go with the flow or do I decide intentionally that I'm going to make this decision to have a good day? Now, how long did it take you to kind of see the fruit of these internal changes that you were making? Because again, this internal work that you're doing, these intentional decisions that you're going to make as an individual doesn't necessarily negate the external forces that are out there still trying to hold you down. So as you're waking up every day and saying, no, this is going to be a good day. I'm going to get through this and I'm going to do well and I'm going to build something great. I'm going to be, I'm going to stand out on my job. I'm going to take my business to the next level, but then all the things start happening. Uh, so as you begin to turn and you stopped being super reactive externally and started doing the internal work, like when did you start saying, you know what, this is, this is working. I'm starting, I'm starting to get what I need out of this. I think that's an ongoing work in progress for me. Like I have to remember, I have to remind myself how I want to approach a situation, especially when it involves anger and being upset about things is something that stems from childhood because there was a lot of instability in my parents' marriage and I got to see that firsthand. And that just created a lot of just anger in me as to why was this happening? Why were my parents not on the same, on the same terms? Why, you know, just questions. And so that, I've grown with that my entire life, you know, from a child into my teens. And so it, it's been a life work in progress, to be honest, when it comes to managing emotion and channeling that emotion into positive instead of negative. Um, and I think also with age comes maturity. Um, from another aspect in terms of external forces, right? Other people telling you what you cannot do. So I'll use my business as an example. And Clever All Finance is actually seven years old this month right? Um, and throughout from, from pretty much day one, I've gotten all kinds of feedback as to why this business will not be successful, right? Uh, when I first started my business, it was like, oh, what you're doing is cute. Oh, why did you start a business? Do you and your husband have money problems? Like what's going on? <laughs> that kind of stuff. And then starting the business, well, there are so many people in finance out here, like, you know, it's not really a viable business. You know, people of color, like I told you, don't care about their personal finances or the personal finance is such a difficult space. And then, you know, going out to try to raise capital to grow my business in 2018, I got things you know, what I told you, black women don't care about their finances. And then even in meetings, someone once asked me, what, what white founder are you trying to copy? Um, <laughs> someone told me, don't, don't talk about your children. It, it's too much baggage. Don't tell people you're married. Don't wear your wedding rings. What does your husband think about you trying to be a boss? Those are questions that I got. And so I've had so many instances where I have been challenged and I have been tested and uh, it, it's an ongoing work in progress, right? but it takes time to develop that maturity. And I think the way I've developed it over the years, so it, to answer your question is taking years, but the way I developed it over the years is intentionally taking time to reflect back on every instance. And one great piece of advice I got from one of my mentors, one of my advisors, is that I should always document things as they happen and what I have learned so that I can reflect back on them when I start to forget where I'm coming from. And that has been incredibly helpful. Ooh, that sounds good. I might have to steal that now, Bola. Okay. How, uh, since you've been on this journey from a single person, now you're a wife. How have you brought this journey into your marriage? Like, what do the conversations look like with your husband? Uh, does he have the same philosophy? Yeah, so um, I, I began my journey as a single person, um, personal finance journey, and then my business, I started after I got married. Uh, but fortunately, my husband and I have a lot of the same values, uh, especially when it comes to the goals that we want to accomplish for ourselves, for our children. And I, I remember we had some, uh, during premarital counseling, we, we did that. And that was just something that 
we had thought would be good for us to do, right? Uh, we had had some disagreement about, you know, um, he, he's, he was raised as a traditional African man, which means you take care of your children and, your, you know, your wife should not be out there hustling in the street. <laughs> And I had coming from a background where my mom, you know, was watching her friends go through divorces, saw her her best friend commit suicide. My mom was always hustling. I'm like, I'm always going to be hustling because I'm not going to rely on you for my own life. So there was that debate there. But what has really helped us, which was somewhat of a struggle at the beginning, was communication and getting on the same page. And my husband and I, we're very different personalities. Um, you know, I'm more of like, this is how we're going to do it. We need to plan, 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 plan. And he's like, calm down. <laughs> Let's take the actions and then we can review the plan later. So it involved a lot of communication. What works for us is really being transparent on what we want to accomplish together and then individually. And also giving each other the space to accomplish the goals that are meaningful to us individually as individual people in addition to our joint goals. And so there are things that I have had, that I have really wanted to do that he has had to take a step back on his goals from so that I could go out and do those things. And there are things that he has really wanted to do that I have taken a step back from pursuing my goals so that he can go do it. And the reason why we've had to take these step back steps back is because we have two young kids, right? And we can't both be out there. Our kids cannot raise themselves. So communication is is so key. Um, Having conversations about money, um, you know, I got married when I was 29 and I kind of was establishing my finances and I was like, joint account? I mean, eh, no work for me. (laughs) But we've come to this phase where our, our finances are joint and we have those joint goals and we can talk about them and we have rules in place. Like if we're gonna spend more than X amount of money, pick up the phone and let's just have a quick conversation to make sure it aligns with our, our bigger goals. So communication is the is a big, big one for us. And I mean you bring up some some valid points because the whole point of this choosing to prosper journey is to not stay in a low place financially and to, to elevate. What happens when you elevate? What happens when you get successful? What happens when the business does well? You've experienced all of the above. How do you still find the motivation to choose to prosper when you, you're on top of the game these days? Oh, that's very kind of you, Talent. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, if I'm being fully transparent, and we've we've had this conversation offline, even with Ty, Sometimes I'm just tired, you know, you're just, you're tired. Um, Success and money are not the epitome of happiness, right? Um, Peace of mind, health, having, you know, your family around you, those good experiences, those are the things that truly make you happy. And and money and success are just like added tools that help you make that happiness fuller, but they're not the core of the happiness. You know, and sometimes I, I'm just tired. And for me, the motivation comes from my kids and them being able to look at me as a role model. And it also comes from the lives that the business is changing. And I think I took that for granted in the early days because when you start a business, especially in this day and age where it's all online, you don't get to see the people who are reading your content. You don't get to see the people who are who, who are experiencing successes with saving or investing or paying off debt because you're behind the screen. So it almost feels like there's no reward for all of your efforts because nobody, you can't see anybody, right? Uh, but, you know, one of the things that really helped was taking time to ask for feedback from our community, from our audience and having them share how has this business helped. And just hearing their stories, getting their feedback has been so impactful as to the value that what we do here brings to their lives. And that's the motivation, that we're helping one person every day, that this one woman has been able to um, navigate through a pandemic with her income being cut in half because she found some resources on our platform that supported her through it. Uh, It's this person being in credit card debt their entire lives since they were 18 and now they're 45, but they finally paid off their first credit card because they got this education. Those stories make everything that I do, killing myself, you know what it is, this business life, up early, you know, sleeping late, stress, this, that, it, those stories make it all worth it. And they're the continued motivation in addition to my kids. And what would you say about the power of community on the journey to choose and to prosper? Um, for people that are 
you know, like for, you know, you said in your book, in a lot of spaces, you was the only black woman in these spaces. And so you didn't see a lot of you. You didn't see a lot of mentor examples that, that, that resembled you or that you aspired to be. And you have to figure it out. So how important is it to try to find yourself some like-minded people, whether that's virtual or in real life, as we are trying to climb this mountain or as we are trying to continue to be consistent in choosing to prosper? It is so incredibly important because you cannot go through a life's journey. You cannot go through a, a journey to save or to pay off debt or to navigate a difficult relationship or a career journey in isolation because there are just going to be times where you yourself don't think you have what it takes to keep going. We've all been there, whether we want to admit it or not. There are just times when everything just seems so difficult. How am I going to get through it? And having that community, having that support, having that accountability, is a, it can be as simple as that person tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, you can do this. Hey, keep going. Just take that extra step. Hey, let me just show you what I experienced and how I got through it to help motivate you to keep going. Community means everything. And I know for some people, it's difficult to embrace community, to embrace um, that whole idea of networking and seeking the support system because it, it's hard. I'm an introvert, right? I don't, I don't like people. <laughs> so I, mean, really, I like being by myself. You know, the pandemic lockdown was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I have to go out. You have to see nobody. I love it. But I realized very quickly that if I wanted to grow from a personal development perspective, if I wanted to grow my business, I needed to find a way to step out of my comfort zone and reach out to people and resources that could support me, right? And it could mean spending a few hours on Amazon looking for the best reviewed books on an issue you're trying to overcome and learn it, right? There is YouTube now, finding the right people who are going to support you in achieving a certain thing you're trying to achieve. Reaching out to someone you know in your network, right? Within your friends, your family, your extended relationships that you can just sit and have a conversation with about what you're going through. And for people who really need it, whether it's like reaching out to pastoral support or reaching out to a a therapist, someone that you can just offload yourself to without the fear of judgment or shaming might be what you need to just keep going on that journey. And so community, accountability, mentorship, having just someone in your corner is so incredibly important. But I will caution that just because their body's present don't mean that they're the right people there to support you. You need to be mindful of who you're getting advice from. You need to be mindful of who you're leaning leaning on support, for support, because the truth is that there are just some people who are not in the position to support you because of where they are in their own life or who just don't care about seeing you succeed, (laughs) that you cannot, like every word out of their mouth is going to be like, oh, girl, no, please, you can't do this. Oh, listen, what? Who? Nobody in your family has ever done this. Listen, did you see what happened on TV? Why do you think you're going to be able to do that? Like, you don't want those people. You want people who are truly going to support you. So when people ask me, how do I find, um, you know, how do I, where do I start? I always tell people, lean on, look for the resources and the tools, but you also need other human beings. And when it comes to those other human beings, look for people who are motivated, that are on the journey you're on, and they're ready to go out and go hard to achieve their goals, or look for people who have accomplished what you are trying to accomplish. And thank God for this day of the internet, and social media. There are so many people. I have so many virtual mentors in my head. They've never met me, but every time they have a new video, I'm there. Every time um, they have a new book, I bought it. A new podcast, I've tuned in, right? And I'm feeding off of that experience that they have to keep me motivated on my own journey to keep moving forward. Speaking of new books, let's talk about choosing to prosper. Let everybody know what they'll find in the pages of this fantastic new book and how they can get their own copy. Yes, yeah, so it's called Choosing to Prosper, Triumphing Over Adversity, Breaking Out of Comfort Zones, and Achieving Your Life and Money Dreams. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is its almost a, like a love letter where I share my own experiences from the way I was raised and the adversity, you know, facing my family, um, and just what I did to achieve success on my own terms, despite a lot of negativity in my life, despite being told that I would never succeed, despite in my career, other people taking credit for my work, despite tr- struggling to build a business that I believed in when nobody else believed in it. So uh, I talk about that in the book. And I, in every chapter, I also challenge the reader 
to reflect on where they are coming from because my story is my own. But you need to get comfortable with assessing where you are coming from and where you want to go. So there are exercises in the book to guide you through that, to help you craft where it is you're trying to go to as you make that intentional choice that you're going to succeed, that you're going to do well, that you have what it takes to prosper. So you can find this book everywhere books are sold. It's available as an ebook, an audio book, and a physical book. And you can also ask your local library to order it. And if you're international, you can ask your bookstore or bookseller to place an order for the book as well. Awesome. And everybody know about your blog, your podcast, YouTube, whatever they need to know to stay in touch with yeah so to stay in touch with me visit clevergirlfinance.com we have a podcast called the clever girls no podcast we have a youtube channel instagram um we have over 30 plus completely completely free courses and a website with articles that get uh, gets updated every single day so visit clevergirlfinance.com we'll be sure to have everything that bola has mentioned in the show notes of this episode just if you're on the podcast app scroll up the links are there you're watching us on youtube look right underneath the video and you will find a link to the show notes there bola before we let you go man some people want to make this decision start this journey of choosing to prosper but are unsure if they have what it takes what would you tell them if you had a chance to talk to them face to face one on one Mm -hmm. I would say get clear on your why. You may not yet believe that you have what it takes, even though you do, right? But think now, why do you want this thing? There's a dream you have. There's a goal that you want to pursue, right? You may not have the skill. You may be working on your mindset. You may be working on your personal development. But that thing you want to achieve, how bad do you want it, right? How would it change your life? How would it change your trajectory if you were to accomplish that first goal. And that question, right, once you are clear on your why, how bad you want it, usually is the incentive for you to take the first steps and empower yourself to being able to do this. And it's really important to know that your why is not based on the standards of the world. It's not based on what you see on Instagram, what people are telling you is the right age, the right demographic, the right uh, uh, local, I mean, neighborhood, none of that. It's based on what it is that you truly want to accomplish for yourself in your life that will ultimately make you happy. So how bad do you want it? You know, and then take that first step and you will find yourself building that confidence um, to lead you to where you're trying to get to. Fantastic advice. I hope everybody has taken good notes. Bola, we can't say thank you enough for coming and sharing your wisdom, advice, and your story with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate you guys so much. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another fantastic edition of His and Her Money Show is in the books. Remember, we got everything, including Bola's new book, in the show notes. Just click there and start this journey. You deserve it. We only got one life to live. Let's make sure that we live it well. That's all we got for this time, guys. Until next time, peace.